Oh, oh man. So I was just running the Blackjack 24 at the little pond, uh, testing out the stuffing tube I just installed, and uh, I basically flipped the boat, doing about 50, and I didn't have my hatch ta taped up, and the hatch flew off. I wanted to make a quick video on what to do if you flip your boat and, and submerge all of your electronics. Basically, I'm going to set a fan right in my boat, First of all, the first thing I did when I got home is get the fan going in my boat. All right, that's going to dry off any stagnant water in the boat. The next step, we're going to pull the motor, take it apart, lube the bearings, and then we're going to take the servo apart, make sure there's no water in there. So I stick around, stick around, don't blink, don't blink. Big B here with Ironclad RC, channel where we tinker test and tune everything RC. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good, good. Big B with Ironclad RC. While you have your fan blowing inside your boat, your batteries were probably uh, submerged as well. So if you got soft packs or hard packs, make sure you tip it down so the water drains out. And uh, just throw your, your batteries in the boat when you have the fan in there. Dry the batteries out. A viewer, subscriber, comment uh, when he was done with his batteries after running his RC boat, he would actually put his batteries in a bucket of rice um, like you would a smartphone if you dropped it in water and I'm sure that would work after you sank your boat as well to get the moisture soak that moisture up out of your batteries just throw it boom in a bag of rice bucket bag bowl whatever oh these are brand new batteries first time I've used them and sank the boat look see the hatch see the hatch the pins pulled through that brings up another point use tape if you're doing anything over 50 uh, you'll, uh, you'll, you'll regret it like I am right now so it's been a couple of hours I just pulled the fan off so uh, we're gonna start with the servo we're gonna pull this servo I've already took the screws off and basically we're gonna just open the servo up and make sure there's no stagnant water inside the servo just be careful when you take it apart you know let's let's see if there's any water in here look at there so I'm glad I did it see there's a little bit of water in the servo if you have some corrosion X just kind of don't get it on the motor just hit it with a corrosion X you know on both sides of the chip I just done it so mine should be good don't get it down in here I guess that's where the servo finds its center don't spray it like down under this chip just spray it on the chip and that's it that should be good for you so I'm gonna let, let this air dry all night I'm just gonna kind of set it off to the side keep everything together with it so I don't lose anything you know just gonna set it with my my boat parts here I recommend removing your flex cable from the boat once you sink it re-grease it dry the cable off but I also recommend removing your flex cable every time you're done with your boat uh, so that if you're not going to use it for a while especially um, it you know if you got a little bit of corrosion X just spray it in your in your receiver after you sink your boat you know that way it's nice and waterproof for you I've been putting my my receiver on the sides of the hull and I actually like it on the side if it does get water in it it will actually drain out a little little quicker if it's like standing on its side instead of sitting flat for the water to sit in on the chipboards uh, the next step is going to be probably your most important step is the motor We're going to remove the motor from its mount uncouple the collet from the flex cable Oh, that's out of the cooling jacket so brushless motors are actually they're waterproof uh, nine times out of ten you can run a brushless motor in water and it won't mess the stator or the rotor up but your bearings that's what you need to take care of the bearings 
wipe the inside of the stator and lube up I've got some bearing oil when I say lube I'm talking about light oil for bearing high-speed bearings um, that way our bearings don't seize up on us mid-run or something so uh, let's get this water jacket off oh, I hate to take this water jacket off it's hard to get on and off all right so this is not an open in bell motor so when you sink a motor like this you've got to take it apart you've got to take it apart like if if you got a motor like like uh like this that has the open end bells you could basically just oil your bearings on both sides and be done with it because um, it's going to air dry you get airflow through the motor with this style motor which this motors they boast it's for cars and boats and airplanes and blah 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 but it has a sealed end bell water is going to be in your in your can and you, you won't even know it there's no way for air to get in there to, to dry things off so you basically are going to have to pull your motor apart if you want it to last last you know um, and, and this don't have to be done you know you could probably you could probably if you sink it just once you could probably get away with putting some high, a little drop or two of high speed bearing oil on your bearing but I can't get to this back bearing so I've got to open it up to oil that bearing up you know what I'm saying and I, I probably gonna repeat myself a few times in this video but uh, I just kind of want to make a few points clear you know about uh, maintaining your boat after you you sink it all right carefully pull your end cap off all right there's going to be a couple of bushings and, and uh, shims nine times out of ten there'll be a couple of bushings shims under your cap so uh, be careful when you pull it off your end bell off because that end bell fits tight over the bearing so might have to knock a couple burrs off from your collet yep see there and what I do is I'll I'll put everything in order yeah look how bad it is look how bad that bearing is right there this is the first time I've cleaned this motor so it's gonna be bad and it and I you know wanted to show you guys this because it's very important if you're not used to pulling stuff apart like this and, and, and putting things together in order, maybe video pulling all this stuff apart. You see how that, that's like a little fat shim? And these are like super thin. So uh, that I know that's going to go on first when I put my motor back on and then the, the end bell is going to go on last. So uh, we're going to pull this rotor out of the motor can, the stator. You want to pull it straight out. You don't want to like rub that rotor all over the stator. All right, so it's it's pretty dirty. See, it's got some rust in there. It's probably from us sinking the boat today. Water got in the motor and rust kind of got all over the rotor. It's laid on something uh, non non metallic. All right, so I got one big shim that come out the the back of the motor. All right, and it looks like that was it out the back. So that big shim just sits on the, the back of the rotor like so, and then you put it back in the motor. The towel, see all that rust and, and grime? Uh, you'll lose you'll lose RPMs. You'll lose. Uh, speed from all that build up in your brushless motor so uh, anytime you sink it always do this look at all that basically you're just going to take the end bell end cap off the back just not take it off all the way unless it lets me uh, I want to just put some oil in that bearing so yeah see there was water in the back of the can you see that shiny Yep, that's water. So I'm glad we did this. Just gonna clean that up a little bit. See the water on the end bell? It's terrible for your motor. 
Yeah, I gotta start taping this boat up. Any anytime you're over 50, 60 mile an hour with an RC boat, 45, 50 mile an hour, you, you need to tape tape up the boat. <laughs> I need to start doing it. I need to live by my my wisdom wisdom. So I'm just gonna oil up the bearing. You don't need a whole lot. A couple little drops in there. Let it give it time to like work its way down into the bearing you know oh that was nice and butter smooth yeah that one's good that one's good the front one on the other hand not so much yeah I'm not gonna spray no chemicals or anything in this motor you can a lot of people say use brake cleaner or, or uh, you know all, all kind of stuff like that I'm just gonna wipe it down and blow the stator out I never put chemicals on my rotor never uh, it could it could break the like epoxy glue they have uh, holding the Kevlar wrap on so you never want to put like brake cleaner or anything like that on your rotor you always take super good care of this keep it bone dry if, if, if at all possible that's what wraps the magnets that Kevlar uh, is what wraps the magnets and holds the magnets onto the rotor the motor shaft um, and if these become loose then you'll you'll throw a magnet you know they just glue these magnets on and hold it in with this wrap and uh you know if you break that you'll sling a magnet and tear all kind of stuff up so Never get chemicals on that. Kind of blow in there, you know. Uh, don't stick a wire brush in it. No, not a, maybe a toothbrush. Maybe if it's soft, but uh, be careful. You don't leave anything in this stator. It needs to be like perfectly clean. All right. So I'm gonna go blow that out real quick. Quick jack of my jaws. And blow it out. I don't want to take the bearing out because it might be a tight fit. And I could possibly mess the bearing up trying to get it out of its perch here. So um, I'm going to leave mine in. You could take yours out, but be very careful not to mess up that center race. Now we're going to blow this uh, stator out. All right, just kind of blow on the, on the inside and try to blow out the, the grime from around the copper windings. So you should see some water come out the other end when I blow it. See that? Alright, so uh, it looks pretty good. I got this one fairly clean. I would like to have pulled the bearing out, but just doing it like I did it, it's better than not doing it at all, you know. Got a paper towel here. I'm just gonna kind of uh, uh, twist it up so I can pull it through that stator. Just kind of get all the rust and grime off. Like I said, I'll be repeating myself quite a bit in here, but uh, just want to clean it up best we can. It looks pretty clean to me. Didn't get a lot of rust or anything off the towel, so that's a good sign. We're getting close. Go ahead and get some uh, some lube, some high speed bearing lube on this bearing. I'm gonna go heavy my first application. You guys see? Let it kind of soak in there. Maybe even get your rotor shaft. Don't get no oil on the shaft, but on the rotor. But kind of give it a little spin, you know? See, that's a loud bearing. It's gonna need to be replaced soon. You hear that? Compared to this one, which was been dry in the back of the motor. Let's see. You hear that? Nice and smooth and quiet. And then this one is loud. Alright. So so you don't really want to like let it touch the sides as much as you possibly can. It's inevitable. It's, it's a magnet and metal in there. You, you're just gonna touch. But you know, <laughs> keep it to a minimum. You know what I'm saying? Uh, put your shims back. Don't forget your shims. I had one on the bottom, so we're going to put the one on the bottom. 
and we'll be some people wrap the rotor with a piece of paper and then pull put it in and then pull the paper out uh, but I'm not that you guys seen me I'm not that technical all right so we got it in there and uh, we're going to just go in reverse order the little fat shim in first about lost it all right then the flat ones on top all right, let's wipe off the excess oil on our our front bearing or back bearing, depending on which way you look at it. All right, and then uh, we're gonna put it back on the motor. These, uh, they, you know, the back one actually went on a certain way because of the motor wires, but the front one you could pretty much put it on any any way, and it's not gonna hurt anything as long as those shims are in the correct order. Uh, you should be fine. Boom got to rebuild rebuilt your motor uh, I, I would I would say it's basically a necessity something that you need to do if you sink your boat it's a pain in the butt but save you some money in the long run and you know we all like to save a few dollars so just take it's only taking me about 30 minutes to do this the servo and everything so it's worth it it's worth it not a whole lot we can do with the ESC because it's completely sealed uh, so, so you basically just kind of have to cross your fingers and hope there was no water seeped in to your speed controller. You know what I'm saying? All right, so it's the next day. The servo looks really dry. Uh, there's no water, just a little bit of lube left on it. I wanted to show you guys how to get this little O-ring on. I got this little pick tool I rolled the tip over on. I use this to get teflon liners out of the stuffing tube it just kind of hooks on there and pulls it out and it works great for servos so what i do is i'll just start start on one side and work my way around kind of holding it on there as i go all right i got that side on Then we're gonna work it around to the other side and yep it's on there see how I got it on there use that little rounded off pick tool and as a little hook so uh, I got the back of the servo cleaned up we're just gonna put it on make sure you your chipboards in there perfect and you're not gonna like kink off any wires make sure that this little grommet that holds your RX wires in there make sure it, it goes on there perfect because that's gonna that's gonna be what mainly keeps the water out so you need to make sure this is nice and tight don't over tighten the screws if you're going into plastic like this some of these servos have aluminum caps on the end some of them are plastic if you strip it it's not going to get a good tight seat all right so I'm going to go ahead and tighten these up. Alright, so I'm going to hook these batteries up. And uh, this boat was not loud before I sunk it today. The bearing was not loud. It had a good, a nice hum to it when the motor was, like, turning. So, listen to it now. can hear that bearing it's almost like metal on metal grinding and then let's check the servo oh servo's not working there we go <laughs> had it in the wrong channel I'm telling you guys I'm no professional I'm just like you guys you know I uh, I do my best at, at learning boats and trying to make my boat the best but I don't have the money some of these guys have <laughs> to invest in their boats. So I'm like you guys. I, you know, I have to make stuff last. So taking these extra precautions is going to save you some money in the long run. So check it out. It works good. Motor sounds good. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate you guys watching my channel. Uh, thank you for all the comments and views. If you know an extra, uh, you know, measure we can take with your RC boat after you've sunk it if you know an extra measure we can take to help 
prolonged life of our electronics, of our servos, of our boats, uh, please, please drop a comment in the comment section. Uh, until next time, you guys, Big B here with Ironclad RC, a channel where we tinker, test, and tune everything RC. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good, good. <laughs> yeah. Ring the bells and all the whistles to get notified for future builds, future projects. As always, thank you for watching.